observed. All right, hello everyone. It is um, Wednesday, June twenty eighth. The time is fifteen ten, New York local time, and uh, I am, you know, up on the day. But it's been a very difficult day for me. Um, <laughs> haven't really felt like I've been trading up to my full capability. So, it is what it is. Must move at more than two hundred and um, thousand kilometers. I wanted to make it to my top step profit not target today, and it's it's not going to happen. About uh, and that is Rome's observation confirmed that light was pretty sad. Finite. But precisely what light was would have to wait for two centuries. For as well as the confusing implications of James Clark Maxwell's demon, he is also famous for intertwining electricity. Um, apex, I am up on the day as well. Idea. Electromagnetism. Light, he found, was nothing more than a self-propagating combination of the two, and written into these equations was light's blistering speed. But there was still a problem. Just what was this speed relative to? Maxwell's equations gave no answers, so physicists began to search for a solution. Perhaps, they hypothesized, light traveled in an invisible medium, a mysterious ether permeating the entire cosmos. Okay, we're on the NASDAQ. But that would also imply an ultimate state interested of rest in the short in the side universe. We're also on the watch in the micro Russell. This would break Galileo's relativity. The problem was severe. So whilst one group of physicists set out to measure the properties of this supposed ether, others took the evidence in front of them and made an even larger leap. And chief among these was a young Albert Einstein. Einstein wondered why electricity and magnetism would not obey Galileo's relativity. Why should experiments specifically using the flow of electricity or spin of a magnet reveal absolute motion? In a bold step, he declared that they cannot. And with that, the special theory of relativity was born. On Galileo's ship, Einstein proposed, all experiments would yield the same results whether the ship was secured in port or smoothly sailing on a glassy sea. Throwing a ball would of course not reveal whether the ship was moving, but neither would measuring the speed of light. The speed of light in a vacuum was constant. This final statement seemed to fly in the face of the universe as laid out by Newton. In Newtonian mechanics, you could simply add speeds together, and each observer would measure differing speeds dependent on their own motion. But according to Einstein, this was not the case for light. Everyone would measure the same speed. Whether the ship was stationary, going at watching the NASDAQ, uh, I will draw you out. Uh, However, if this was true, watching this civvy right here, give. order block above. Freedom in the equations. Watching yellow box, want to see how price reacts to the yellow box. Themselves. For it to work, each observer must have their own measurement of space, and each observer must have their own measurement of time. With special relativity, it was the speed of light that was absolute, not space and time. Space and time were no longer the universe. Big move on natural gas today, on which huh? Physics played out, and just as Maxwell had combined electricity and magnetism, space-time too was about to unite. Yeah, look at that, gentlemen. The views of space and time, which I wish to lay before you. They are radical. Henceforth, space by itself and time by itself are doomed to fade away into mere shadows. And only a kind of union of the two will preserve an independent reality. In 1908, Hermann Minkowski, Einstein's former professor, came up with an idea. In reaction to the revelations of special relativity in 1905, he had decided to explore the geometry of these new equations. In Einstein's formulation, space was space, and time was time. And to transform from one observer's viewpoint to another, you needed to mix the two together. But Minkowski pointed out that it was simpler to mix space and time together into space-time. Okay, we're watching the yellow box. To transform one observer's space-time to another through geometry. And so, finally, combined space-time was born. This new melding of the three dimensions of space and one dimension of time has come to be known as Minkowski space. Though Minkowski himself tragically died in 1909, before his idea had been fully embraced by the physics community. 
Newtonian space and time may have been completely upended, but Einstein was still not happy. Though his ideas had revolutionized our ideas of the universe, they could not account for gravity. Newton's gravitational equations needed the distance between masses, and special relativity now told us that no one could even agree on what these distances were. So Einstein went back to the drawing board and spent You get up to here into this civvy and order block on the one minute gravity. chart. What eventually emerged from these ruminations in 1915 was a solution that shocked physics to its core. Einstein had taken Minkowski's geometric picture of space-time and made both space and time bendy and stretchy. The presence of mass and energy producing this curvature. Within this general theory, Einstein concluded that gravity as okay. a force pretty decent candle there exist. on the that first reaction, first pass. Within the curvature of space and time. But didn't get a close Newton's below. The picture of space and time was well and truly dead. For not only was space and time relative, they were flexible as well. The consequences of Einstein's vision of relativity were quickly uncovered. In the special theory, the relative ticks of clocks depended on motion. And whilst everyone feels time passing at one second per second, different clocks will tick off different amounts of time. But with the coming of the general theory, time was shaken even more, as where you are also influences the tick of your clock. The presence of mass curves space and curves time. And so gravity can dictate the relative ticking of a clock. The following year, in 1916, Carl Schwarzschild solved the field equations of relativity for a spherical mass. And written inside his equations was a completely collapsed mass, squeezed into a point. Whilst it didn't get its name for another 50 years, Schwarzschild had the mathematics for a black hole. His solution showed that black holes bend both space and time. And with okay. this I'm going to sit on the two minute comes or the one minute chart here on the NASDAQ. Looking for a short, waiting for it to come up into this busy, sorry, civvy right here. That I'm highlighting with the cursor. Time becomes more and more I'll change that to the yellow box. Compared to clocks in the distant universe, near the heart of darkness, want to see if we respect it. Very slowly. And it wasn't just black holes that sprung from the new equations. In the century since Einstein's gravitational insights, many more bizarre solutions have been found. Throughout the relativistic literature, there are wormholes, warp drives, and even entire curved universes, all built from the malleable nature of space and time. In 1919, observations of the deflection of starlight proved his theory and made Einstein a superstar. And so scientists turned their attention to measuring the effects of general relativity to further cement the concept. One of the weirdest of these experiments was undertaken by Joseph Haffel and Richard Keating in 1971. Watching that their equipment yellow box, watching the yellow box on the Nasdaq. Cesium clocks and a set of jet plane journeys that completely encircled the Earth. To begin the experiment, all the clocks were placed in the same location and synchronized. Some of the clocks then headed off on a plane, some heading to the east and others Got our first little black candle here. It's a good with sign. The Earth's rotation, others against it. Russell 2000. $2,600 was spent on two black candles with two seats on each plane going to Mr. Clock. And because they were flying, they were in a different gravitational field to the clocks left behind. <laughs> After they had the world twice, okay. Yeah, glad I covered the short I had earlier the on the was Russell. By Newton's absolute time, they should all have remained in okay. sync. Next yellow box is going to be relative here. motions and space-time curvature should have desynced them. The experiment was run, and the clocks were reunited. They differed by a few hundred nanoseconds. Einstein was declared the winner. But there is one more test of relativity that has proven to be the most spectacular. In developing relativity, Einstein found stretchy space-time can also... Balance price range coming up to the 50% of that. Just as Maxwell found that electricity and magnetism could okay. ripple, so could We're going to get short one right there. But Einstein couldn't decide if his mathematics were correct or if he was fooling himself, and struggled to conclude whether these gravitational waves were a part of reality. Okay, Nasdaq is coming up through the uh, Russell Hulse was a young box. astronomy student 
who made a spectacular discovery. With his supervisor, Joseph Taylor, whilst peering into the universe with the 300-meter Arecibo telescope, he found a pulsar, the rapidly spinning dead heart of a star. This pulsar, PSR B1913 plus 16, was spinning 17 times a second and was not on its own. But orbited another dead star. Okay, coming up through this busy, coming up to the order block above. Want to see if we get any sort of respect. We've got an old balance price range here. They were able to accurately chart the cosmic dance. Just waiting to see if we get any sort of rejection. It was quite unexpected. With Newtonian gravity, okay, there's something. these dead stars should orbit each other for eternity. But Taylor and Hulse found that the orbits were shrinking and the stars were slowly but steadily being drawn together. Somehow, the energy of their orbits was leaking out into the universe. And it was then Taylor and Hulse realized Einstein's gravitational waves were an ideal culprit. They delved into the mathematics of general relativity and calculated how the orbiting stars formed ripples in space-time, showing how they could carry away precisely enough energy to explain the orbital demise. In 1993, Taylor and Hulse received the Nobel Prize for their discovery, and 24 years later, the prize was awarded for the direct detection of gravitational waves. That experiment was the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or simply LIGO for short, which, with unimagined sensitivity, can feel the tiny ripples of space-time. LIGO has opened a new and exciting window on the universe. Okay. I'm thinking about getting short here pretty quickly. Coming up to the 50% of this old balance price range, coming up to a uh, consequent encroachment of this wick and order block above this SIBI. A uh, pretty decent place for price to reject. Come back down. And so. Okay, we are going to get short three. It is clear that the entire cosmos is written in the language of gravity, of curve right and warped, space and time. But there was one more secret to uncover, hidden in the equations. First realized by Alexander Friedman in 1922 and later proved by Edwin Hubble, the expansion of the universe is the expansion of space. Expanding from a single point 13.8 billion years ago, known today as the Big Bang. Put very simply, there was less space yesterday, and there will be more space tomorrow. Every galaxy has been found to be moving further and further away from us, bar our local group, at an average rate of 70 kilometers a second per megaparsec. Which actually Order means filled. that at the moment, for every 3.26 million light years distance away from us a galaxy is, it is moving away from us at an extra 70 kilometers a second. So, a galaxy 326 million light years from us is moving at 7,000 kilometers a second. And a galaxy 32.6 billion light years away, it recedes from us faster than the speed of light. This may seem bizarre after everything we have learned up until this point, but the universe's speed limit only applies to objects moving through space. And these galaxies are not moving through space away from us. Space is simply growing between us. This expanding universe makes curving and bending space-time okay. even more complicated well. to understand. As equations show that space is infinite, what is actually happening is that the universe is becoming less dense. And clearly, this decrease in density is not completely uniform across the cosmos. You, for example, are not slowly drifting apart. Individual galaxies, too, hold themselves together due to their mutual gravity. But as this gravity is a manifestation of the curvature of space, what happens at the boundary between expanding and non-expanding space? That is not the only problem as expanding space makes the form of yesterday's space-time different to tomorrow's space-time, thus breaking what was thought to be one of the key properties of the universe, conservation of energy. The importance of symmetry in physics was laid out in detail by mathematician Emmy Noether. In this case, a symmetry meaning that when you change your situation, the physics remains the same. Changing location doesn't change physics, meaning momentum is conserved. And the fact okay, that physics well, is the let's same see if uh, the NASDAQ will turn back down if I wanted to. 
but in an expanding universe where space-time is changing, this symmetry is shattered. As space grows, it doesn't stretch, it doesn't dilute, there is just more of it. But as photons travel across an expanding universe, they are stretched and they lose energy. And galaxies are robbed of their speed as their motion grinds to a halt. In this way, energy is simply not conserved as the cosmos grows. A conundrum that causes problems for physicists to this day. And so, it may now seem that space has finally become physical, real. After all, it can bend, expand, curve and ripple. But there is a final twist, one final rug to be pulled out from beneath us. And this can be summed up in the words Came up to, uh, Stephen through Weiner. this Sibby up into the order block CE of, of this uh, one minute wick and the 50% of this uh, one minute balance price range. Nothing. So, a good number of factors the there to indicate that price should come back. Expand. Cosmologists sometimes talk about expanding space, but they I didn't quite get the perfect entry. To the novice, this statement must seem Didn't get the bizarre. optimal entry, but How can I think uh, it was pretty close. Such a claim? Well, because he is absolutely My exits correct. today have just In been no bueno. So, I'm just time is wanting to you know, Nothing. book some profit, so I've taken two off here. Bending and curving. It's a volume imbalance, so price should be drawn to it. Tells us space is nothing and has no properties. We take two off there and leave one to see if we want to come break some lows. Just how were seconds, minutes, and hours affected by the dawn of relativity? As with my Apex account, I'm aiming for the bottom of that swing there. With the full three contracts. The civilization, time meant many things. They knew that their time was unique, unshared by any others. They understood that clocks ticked differently depending on where you were and what you were doing. Their engineers had used this manual. Okay, aiming for this little separation here, so I'll show you. Great portals of distorted time and space permitted travel across the empire. Green box. I'm aiming for green box. Near the gravitational pull of a black hole. Green box is the separation between this candle and this and candle. It's a volume imbalance, inefficiency, end. which is highly attractive to price. Price is most drawn to inefficiency, like second drawn to the distinction between liquidity. Past, so most drawn to inefficiency, is and it is second most drawn to liquidity. Illusion. Inefficiencies do come first, the coming of and there are many of them. Physicists were which is ergo why you see prices constantly going up and down. That every particle in the universe had a past Just moving from inefficiency to inefficiency. And like a line bit of liquidity. A map, they could chart the journey of a particle through the four dimensions of space and time, tracing out its individual world line, from the past to the future, through a series of nanos. <gasps> each particle in your body, each electron and quark, journeys on its own world line. Before you were conceived, the world lines were dispersed. But as you grew, many world lines condensed into a bundle, which is you. And when you are gone, these worlds This has been a very tough day of trading for me. For a fleeting moment in the life of the universe, you exist as little more than a collection of world lines. A brief knot. Okay, I just want to see it come down to this volume and balance. We take off two there. Whilst unsettling, this appears to make sense. And then let one run and see so if one wants to... You know, if we want to break some lows coming into the cash close here, we've got 30 minutes left of trading, and I want to see, okay, maybe we want to get on our regular trading hours. Maybe we want to come down, you know, run some lows on the close, and so I don't want to limit my profit in case, you know, price wants to do that. Now, just how do we define a unique notion of the past? Just where does the future begin? Russell's looking good. I missed the optimal entry. Within the equations of relativity, optimal entry was the CE of this wick. Maybe this rejection block. It's volume and balance right there as well. Of all things is already out there. Just moving from inefficiency Somewhere. to inefficiency. This and as you can see, this was a little balance price range, 50% of that. That was a pretty good entry. Rejection block up here was another. That was pretty much the optimal entry. From moment to moment. All we can do as we trace out our optimal exit is follow our predefined path. And concepts probably the CE of this week. Free will, a lost. Let's see. So 
balance price range. But this cannot be correct. Fifty percent of that is eighteen sixty-eight. Let's go for eighteen sixty-eight. Door that is yet to be open. Point one. They are clearly different. And hopefully, maybe we can get there in the cast before the cast close. Consider two electrons hurtling. So optimal exit here, I think, you know, if it wants to run liquidity, then it's going to come down much lower. But I am just going to be conservative with this top step trader because I want to, uh, you know, make money. With my cash account here on TradeStation, I really kind of want to milk the maximum out of this swing down if we get it. So that's why you're seeing me take 50% of this balance price range. Do we get there in the next 30 minutes? Maybe. Maybe. I think so. Okay, coming down to this volume imbalance right here. Green box. I want to see it just trade right through the green box without really any trouble. But what if you went one step further? We are sell side inefficient all the way down. Instead of switching left and right, you switched past. And future. The film now runs backwards. I was a little bit too aggressive with my exits last night in the overnight session. Um, optimal exits were, were not breaking structure. Optimal exits were just at swing lows, basically. Okay, found a little bit of support here on this busy. But I think it's got at least another one minute push down. Russell. Find a little bit of um if you would run the slapstick yeah, it's popping off on the inversion of that C E of that wick. I would immediately know that something was wrong with the arrow okay. of time. I think this has got at least another one minute push down. Why is Could come all the way back up the yellow box and then down. Electrons insensitive to the direction of time. And not just electromagnetism, but gravity and the strong nuclear force are also unaffected. The weak nuclear force does misbehave slightly, but it is a very tiny effect. It seems that at their core the I, I microscopic you know, fundamental think it's got at least another push lower. Do not possess an arrow of time. Time could flow one way or the other, and they simply wouldn't care. This leaves us with a disconnect. The macroscopic, large-scale world we inhabit certainly does know about time. Cooling coffee, burning wood, exploding supernovae. These are not processes that can simply be run backwards. Okay, coming up to a one minute balance price range here on the Russell. Would like to see yellow box invert turn lower. This seems strange. Clearly, our large scale world is nothing more than the collective properties of an uncountable number. Coming up to this first black candle here, would like to see that act as resistance. Invert, turn lower. Electromagnetism. Each of the myriad of electromagnetic interactions. First black candle is on the cursor. Time. Would be good to see so that invert act as resistance. So right here on the cursor. Multitude of time ignorant interactions that take place. Coming up to this balance price range How area, I'm just going to call these mini inefficiencies in here. Lots of liquidity voids, volume imbalances. It is uh, in curling up to this inefficiency. Universe, Would like to see this act as advanced, an area of resistance come down. Far into the future, but this block universe clearly doesn't appear to resemble our own. For we know that our universe didn't stretch infinitely into the past, it had a beginning. From observations, we know that the universe was born almost 14 billion years ago. We don't know I'm not even aiming really for the swing low, yeah, just, just kind of right here in this volume of balance. That should be a draw on price. Space and time came to be in the universe remains a mystery, but they have remained an integral part of the cosmos since its inception. And there are other mysteries about the birth of the universe that we don't understand. Russell, I am I am actually aiming to, be to hold this uh, right up until like one minute before the close, dense, if we're being honest. And strangely smooth. And this smoothness meant that the newborn universe had a very particular property. The universe was born with very low entropy. It might seem strange that smoothness implies low entropy. As a gas spread throughout a room has higher entropy than gas all squeezed in one corner. But for matter in the universe, this smoothness meant gravity could do its work and fall together, eventually clumping into stars and galaxies. And so, as the universe expands, its entropy increases as the matter evolves. Gravitational potential energy is steadily converted into stars, planets, and people. Eventually, this energy is processed into waste heat that spreads throughout the universe. And it is this change okay. from low I do like seeing the body of this first black candle here act as resistance. Cosmos, that is a good sign. Of time. With the Russell, we balance price range is acting as resistance. That's a good sign for lower. About our universe's initial entropy. 
My exits are just have not been optimal today. Coming down, I want to see it come down into this volume imbalance where my cursor is. That's an inefficiency. Should be attracted to green box. My stop's now going to go here. But what this was, we still don't know. And so, would this mean that the block universe has no innate? I want to see it come down to green box. I'll pull two off there. Would it be impossible to distinguish the past? I want to see it come down to this balance price range here. Come trade into the fifty percent of that. But indeed, maybe our ability to imagine anything at all is ultimately because of the special. Okay, it's trying to invert this, or uh, yeah, find support here on right on this busy. On the 10th of June, 1944, a British Halifax bomber was flying over mm. France. With not looking good. Other bombers, it looking was not so good. Landings at Normandy, but near the city of Laval, the aircraft was struck by German flak and crashed in flames into the French countryside. The entire crew perished in the crash. Seven lives were lost. Seven lives in a war that eventually claimed millions. The pilot was a 33-year-old Dutch volunteer, okay. Willem Jacob van Stockholm. And whilst his name is not familiar today, van Stockholm was the man who discovered time travel. Of course, by the 1940s, time travel was a staple of science fiction. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells had been published half a century earlier. But this was all fantasy and whimsy and a firm impossibility in Newtonian space and time. Yet within the new world of relativity, Van Stockholm had discovered a scientific basis. Mathematically, relativity is notoriously challenging. Einstein um, himself had wondered if his field equations would yield any wanna see, analytic solutions. I want to get that pop lower now, see if we get attracted to this volume imbalance. If not, found, I'm probably going to pull it. Derived his black holes. And so, by the 1920s, mm. the hunt was on for the mathematical form of the entire universe. I like seeing it bounce around here without popping lower. I want to see it get to green, green box. That's a volume imbalance, inefficiency. Rules, you know, oftentimes your your entries should be at inefficiencies and even your exits can be at inefficiencies as well. So the liquidity is very much secondary to inefficiency. Price is most drawn to inefficiency. You can count, it's just more reliable to count on inefficiency than it is liquidity. Solution. So, if you're ever wondering between inefficiency and liquidity, which one is going to be the greatest draw, uh, which one is more important, it's, it's absolutely inefficiency. It was an intriguing result. Van Stockholm began to wonder about now these balanced price ranges are actually an efficient price. Universe. That also draws price. From the past so the price is, is drawn to inefficiency, can also be drawn to efficiency universe. as well. But it's drawn to the 50% like everything at these balanced price ranges. And distorted. There, it's also drawn to the liquidity below, so right it's it's a balancing act. And met themselves. It's a little bit of a wait and see game, you know. Loops. Along these, the the, there are many inefficiencies. The They're all over the place. Over They're small. That's why price is constantly reacting, Resists fluctuating. These closed loop world lines, time um, paths. They're even down on the but second chart. And they, in, you know, they invert. They can play travel. multiple times, so it's space and time it's a tough game. To allow time travel, you ever wonder why price is fluctuating so much? It's because these little inefficiencies that it's playing off of are all over the place. To the past. They the are everywhere. To the future. There's no shortage of them. Van Stockholm's goal was to head to Princeton to work directly with Einstein. Okay, I want to say get down a green box. That is inefficient. Gathering, he looked back to Europe. Once his homeland was occupied, his desire was to get into the fight. And Van Stockholm's own world line ended in a French field on a dark night in 1944. Whilst Van Stockholm's name is now lost to history, time travel and rotating universes are not. That's inverting this busy here. Eccentric mathematician Kurt Gödel in 1949. Google is remembered today as one of the greatest logicians of all time. I don't want to see it form a little balanced price range here. That's the opposite today, of what I want. But his contributions to physics okay, were we're equally out. shocking. Escaping the turmoil in Europe as the storm cloud of the Second World War gathered, unlike Van Stockholm, a little Google balanced price range here as well. Princeton University, and it was there he and Einstein became firm friends. I will leave it for a minute. his application for American citizenship. I don't like that is forming a little balance price range. That is 1K. Him from pointing out flaws in the United States Constitution 
to the judge seeing his case. It was at Order filled. that Google turned his remarkable mathematical mind to relativity and the nature of space. So when you see it forming these little balance price ranges, that's a good sign it wants to go pop up against you. Okay. Einstein. Russell's coming back in a yellow box. I don't really want to see it get, like Stockham, he get up here. Mathematics of a rotating universe and closed time so I want to see it respect the... It's going to go... The stop is going to go right there. Because I, I want to see it respect the 50% of this PPR. And if it doesn't, we're out. Google's wife had apparently knitted him a sweater too, but it was not this is probably coming back up to yellow box. Does not record why. Einstein died soon after in 1950. Executions. And Google followed him. See that we took two, sh three short at 120 Google spot 50. We covered at 104 spot 75. This is coming back up to uh, the yellow box. Was always no, it isn't. And the uh, Russell's coming back up to yellow box. But the possibility that Einstein's relativity. Um, this is a BPR balance price range. I want to see the 50% of that respected. And if it's not, I want to be out of the trade, and scratch it. Could time and space really bend back on themselves so far as to allow temporal exploration? Physicists have it's been a very difficult day for me. Shortcuts through space and time, and there are now many solutions to Einstein's Okay, we're coming up on the last 15 minutes of trading. Extremely warped. It would seem that in Einstein's relativity, Russell. Time travel remains. Yeah, I need. I really need to see it turn right here. Fifty percent of this BPR, and if it does not, uh, I'm going to get stopped out. Probably am going to get stopped out on this. Coming back up to yellow box. Somewhere and somewhen else, another relativistic structure, a wormhole, builds a space-time bridge between two locations. A couple of inefficiencies to watch for here. Midpoint of this sibby is the number one. It's also coming up to this old BPR. The reality 50%. of these solutions, whether they can truly exist, remains unanswered. Perhaps we will never be able to focus enough energy into a single place for space-time to bend right back on itself. Hmm. We now understand how Einstein's space BPR here, come up, sweep these highs. Yeah, I don't like this. We're don't pulling this. What it is. Where can we turn? And we're going to basically scratch on the day. I'm, it was not I don't know if I want to play this again. It was charting a new path at the beginning of the 20th century. It was a dramatic period for theoretical physics, and quantum mechanics was at the forefront of the changing order. And so, perhaps... One minute chart, Russell. You can see it is making a balance price range here on the, the buy side. Scales. Probably wants to come and run these equal highs up here. Um, I'm going to get long one. Stop loss is going to go below yellow box. In the far future, the take profit is going to go uh, up here at these nearest highs. And is it five dollars and fifty cents? Yes, it is. Melt. It's there just training. Now All just training. Frozen in the darkness. Uh, this the is an inefficiency. I don't want to be there. I'm going to be right there. To a halt. But some eyes. I think it's going to run these equal highs. The last ten minutes of trading. Bursts of light in the universe. The great books had told them this time would come. Those are equal them, highs. Not I do think that the Russell is going to want those. Forever, whilst the immense gravity of relativity held them together. Okay. On the smallest Nasdaq. Scale, the action of the quantum. Want to see it at least displaced below this bissy. If not, we're going higher. For eons, they had struggled to combine the two. The world of gravity had seemed so distant from the quantum, and so too. Their black hole Russell, home. got 10 minutes of Just cash dissolved. trading that I can trade in. They want to make five dollars, five big ones. The last few were so very tired, they didn't even try. A university student attending lectures on general relativity in the morning and others. Okay, coming up to this BPR here, 50% of that. Forgiven, See how it treats that. that. Professors are fools. Okay, we're getting long. to communicate with each other. For at least a century. Reaction off the that BPR. There is a grave. Don't want to see it trade down. Cemetery in Tallahassee, Florida. Written on uh, it is the name of a man who died in 1984. It's coming out of this BPR. Just watching like it. Others in the graveyard. The man also has a plaque at Westminster Abbey. BPR in London, here. Not far from the mortal remains of Isaac Newton. This plaque does not say much. It labels the man as a physicist and notes his birth and death. But on the plaque is also an equation, a complex mix of Latin and Greek letters. And this equation 
was the first unification of Einstein's relativity and quantum mechanics. The oh, Russell did not treat me well there, huh? Moore referred to Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac as the strangest man to visit his institute. Born in Bristol at the beginning of the 20th century, okay. he did We're not try one more time. seem destined for scientific greatness. In 1923, Dirac began his studies at the University of Cambridge. Famously focused on his science, he shunned many human interactions, and his conversations were mainly silent. His colleagues went as far as to name the unit of one word per hour as a Dirac in his honor. But whilst his speech was slow, his mind raced around the problems of physics. It was a heady time to be a physicist, with both Einstein's new world of relativity and the bizarre implications of quantum mechanics opening up. Were the fundamental secrets of the universe finally revealing themselves? When Dirac began his exploration of quantum mechanics, it was written in the past. The mathematics of Schrodinger and Heisenberg played out on the stage of Newton, with the tick of an absolute clock and Galileo's vision of space. But Dirac knew that this picture of space and time was simply outdated. Surely the equations of quantum mechanics should reflect Einstein's new visions of space and time. This bothered Dirac, and he scrambled with the mathematics trying to make it work, okay. spending his Sundays walking alone, turning over the equations in his mind. And in December 1927, I'll switch over to my Apex account. Fog began to clear. That's going to be it for top step. A relativistic quantum I need to hide the screen for a second. To view. An equation that obeyed Einstein's demand that there is no special rest in the universe. And Dirac used this equation to explain the simplest of particles, the electron. Suddenly, various peculiar properties of the electron made mathematical sense. All right, we're Within back. Dirac's equation, the electron spins and behaves like a small bar magnet. Both properties had been difficult to explain, but they were a natural consequence of relativity. And there was another property that was completely unexpected. If you take the square root of one, there are two solutions, plus one or minus one. In the same way, in explaining the electron, the Dirac equation has two solutions. One solution is negatively charged and clearly represents the electron. But just what does the positive solution correspond to? At first, Dirac wondered if it could be the proton, the positively charged particle within the nucleus. But being almost 2,000 times more massive, that could not be correct. He eventually concluded his equation was predicting okay. a brand I think the Nasdaq particle. is going to go higher right the into the close. Electron. Come up and this take out these equal the highs. Mass as the electron, but have the opposite we're going we're gonna, to uh, wager on that. I'm going to put the stop just below this uh, BPR. The equation was the birth of quantum field theory. Okay, the I don't really want to see it get below that, this it is BPR. Mathematics that and I'm going to aim for this high. The fundamental particles and forces. Let's see if we can the get that. Basis of the modern standard model. And for each of these particles, there are antiparticles, electrons, okay. positrons, Russell, we're going to end up. Uh, looks like we are going to end up positive on the day. I do want to see it come in into this uh, by side inefficiency. It should be attracted to that and these equal highs. Field theory is built on. I would end up a big five dollars on the day if I can get this fill. Gravity and the general theory of relativity. What if we incorporate curved space-time into the Dirac equation? Unfortunately, after such incredible early success, the last century has brought us no further in this quest. With quantum field there it is. We are up $5.50 minus commission, so we are positive on the day, baby. The All right, we're out. We're going to be out of our cash account. We're on our Apex evaluation account. Space -time is we're aiming for these highs view, up here. But space and time are still the universal stage and this stage is broken when considering the curve don't want to see it come back down to this BPR relativity remember in the general theory of relativity space and time are dynamic and evolving they are not what is a BPR stage. it's a balanced price range it's they just little layers in the physics of the universe. curl up like this come down curl right back up that's a BPR years of work it's various infinities uh, is it an inefficiency no with it's a balanced bending, price range but it is a draw on liquidity and it, it acts like an inefficiency so it's a draw on liquidity uh, it's a very strong uh, launching point it's a very strong um, 
Some physicists. It's a very strong place of support and resistance. Going back to the drawing board, oh, yeah. The oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Came back to the 50% of that BPR. The quest for the so-called theory of everything. The so far fruitless search. Last 10 minutes of trading. Quantum world to the okay. 50% of that BPR came right down to it. Fully explain the universe. Acted as support. Like to see that. Want to see it come up and, and take these highs. Not necessarily made things if not, we are going to be stopped out. In one of the leading contenders, string might try a long at the green box. Be 11 or even I'm betting on this BPR right here. They are very strong support resistance. To say about BPRs. The nature of time and space. Again, they can be small like this. So simple. In M theory, space and time. Price really has a strong reaction at 50% of these BPRs. It's it's one of my favored structure in multiple favored of patterns. Everything. Not just space and time. It is an area of efficient matter, price trading. Radiation and all so it is uh, price exactly when it comes back to it has has a strong reason to react. Tell us. React off of it. For the theory of everything is okay, price is getting a liquid. Party. We're coming to the last the nine minutes of, of trading. Last nine minutes of the cash session. There we go. There it is. Quantum phenomena. At the smallest possible scale, space time is chunky, fundamentally meshed together into a network. And to us, this subatomic mesh has the appearance. Aiming for this high. That's just shy of these two other highs. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we change this to two. What are these quantum grains made of? And again, we are left disappointed. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to come take these highs. But perhaps the solution is simpler than this. Perhaps some have speculated, space and time do not exist. Might even have to hold this after the cash close. Coming up into an old BPR that you Remember, could see at the start of this had acted uh, disagreement right here is our balance. Well, not really. This was just a SIBI that had a reaction. This is a BPR right here. If you want me to highlight the BPR, I will. I just want to see it just, just punch right through this high. Just punch right through it. No problem. Just cut through it. And the relativistic vision of space-time seemed to match this picture. Einstein told us that matter defined the structure. Okay, you want to see the BPR and space time told matter what to do. We know that in the quantum there it is. picture, That's the BPR. space time appears to be. You can see how we have a down candle and two up candles, and it makes this little V. That's a balanced price works. range. But what if space Bang! Time All right, we're we're out two. Really we're gonna let one run. What if space and time are actually emergent phenomena? Okay. Something just punched right through our, our take profit. We are going to put this one up right there. And we're going to let this thing uh, run. We're going to let it run. See how far it can go. And that's, uh, you know, that's good. Okay, let's are the same. In 1997, Juan Maldacena found a key relationship in the Almost have a full drawdown again on uh, Apex Evaluation account. ADS Might be able to get to a PA account next week. Be accidental and of no Got Thursday and Friday to trade. Also be pointing to something Got July 4th deeper. and 5th next week. Those are going to be holiday days. Uniting which is unfortunate. Mechanics and um, but if this is the right path, something else emerges yeah so this relationship we're pretty much up at a full drawdown here um, on pieces of apex length and fundamental time Planks that's our BPR right there that set the smallest last night I was universe. trading the Nasdaq on it's electronic really trading hours and I got into a lot scales, of trouble space with the BPR time, that acted against me it was right here I was shorting this thing down to here I saw this BPR get formed after sell stops were taken and uh, I got into big trouble with that. You got to be careful with these BPRs, especially if you see so that stops were just taken and it forms a BPR like that. Of reality. No time you can see they're pretty common. Right here, right here. Perhaps to these BPR grains, to the upside. These are concepts that make no sense. Right they're there. Only, they're good turning points. How they interact. For us, you know, much larger than the BPR right grains, here, the BPR right here, space. BPR right here. They are fairly common. The BPR down here. The grains, we experience the experience so, experience. balance price ranges, they are strong launching points for price. Time, price can really use it um, to launch, come back to the 50%, and, and then... Bits and pieces.
stop filled. Alright, we're out. This may feel uncomfortable. Just where Yeah, that's gonna I'm gonna call it with that. Universe. Perhaps it is best Am I gonna call it with that? Like Maybe. Most okay. of us have come to terms with the fact Might trade one more. Back to this balance price range. We our consciousness Wanna see how it reacts to that. Emerges. We seem to be able to We are reacting positively off the balance price range. Being. Maybe all we need to do is the same for the stage Purple box. play out our existence. Reclaiming the balance reclaimed BPR. So it's trading back into it. 50% of that. And so we have come a long way and are approaching okay. the end. We will uh order filled our a one long our one one lot long right here. Seemed so natural, so normal. Um, but we have don't really want to see it trade below this balance price range. More mysterious than they first appeared. Or just BPR for short. Purple Though box. The space and time of Newton was don't want to see it trade below point, purple box. They became far we have uh, inefficiency down at green box. Space-time. And the quantum nature of space-time attempts to dice space and time into little pieces. But are we really any closer to understanding... Okay, we are going to aim for the high that we just made. ...is pinned on our next fundamental theories. But the theory of everything will eventually shine a light on the universal stage. And maybe really coming up to theory, the cash the close, and we are probably going to be stopped out on this. That is why I just traded one contract. Don't feel great about it. As the cosmos unfolds, perhaps quantum processes reclaimed BPR on the purple box. One instant at a time. Or perhaps We're just going to let ourselves get stopped out if we get to the low of the purple box. <laughs> reality. Of course, nature is not bound to reveal its secrets. No matter how hard scientists work, they may never reveal the fundamental truth. We must face the fact that some mysteries might remain forever mysterious. Indeed, just what space and time actually are could forever be beyond. So reclaimed purple box here, meaning that it traded to the purple box and so, multiple times, finally, and so um, it could end up just punching through it at this point. The cosmos. We're coming back down to it for the third time, so yeah, if it wants to act as support again here, that would. Black hole this is this is a key pivot point right here. Is purple box. This is a balanced price range. Price is trading back into it. Day, okay, it's a moment. strong area of support resistance. These BPRs. The decay of the universe could no longer. It's also a bissy. Okay, it's basically a sibi into a bissy. They had mastered. Time, so it's an inefficiency that is is immediately feet. balanced. Or it's balanced very closely. It's not really an immediate rebalance pattern. Immediate rebalance pattern is different. Um, You've been watching the entire history of the universe. Nope. Giving you another example of a BPR to the. Let's see here. This is, you know, this is basically a BPR. Up here, you can see it comes straight up, straight back down, so Bissy into Sibi. So you can see that that acted as a strong area of resistance right there. They're all over the place. Um, mostly they've been on the on the downside today, so on the long side, long side BPRs. Balance price ranges. Um, I, I have not mastered the balance price range by any means, but it is essentially a, like I said, it's it's basically a sibi into a bissy or a bissy into a sibi or the other way, and it's just where you have a this kind of V formation, upside down V or right side up V. I don't know how else to put that. So it, it's where price is is balanced. And because price is balanced, it acts as a very strong magnet to price. Uh, price is seeking a fair price at all times. That's what the algorithm is doing. It creates inefficiencies, and it also seeks these fair, fair prices. And then go, it then will go and create inefficiencies. And you know, if you don't know what you're looking for, it's very hard to keep up with. These BPRs are one of my favorite patterns, really. Okay, we're coming up to a wick inefficiency that could invert. And you know, it might seem like what I'm doing here is impossible, and I promise you it's not. I'm waiting to see how price is reacting at these inefficiencies. Sometimes, you know, it'll just punch through it. Order filled. Okay, uh, that is it. All right, we are really going to be done there. That is our market on close. 
Um, I am back at a full drawdown on my Apex 20K valuation account. I'm really happy with that. Uh, it means we have another day of trading. We didn't quite get to the profit limit on um, Top Step. Uh, we came close. We were like $800 short. Uh, it was a very tough day. We ended up profitable on all three accounts. Basically scratched on my personal cash account up like $3. Um, but if I continue trading well, uh, we will be funded with Apex and Top Step again soon. So today was a tough day. I'm not going to lie to you. Today was a very difficult for me to read price. But we managed to uh, get back to a full drawdown on Apex, and we got to, uh, almost to the profit limit on Top Step. Um, I'm getting pretty close to one or two days, and I could be funded again with Top Step, and that would be a good thing. So I'll show you the ex. Well, I don't want to show you the executions. They're pretty horrifying. I'll show you the latest ones. I don't want to show you the earlier ones. They're horrifying. Um, so let's see here. You can see that we went short. This is kind of a BPR right here. Up, It's up like this, straight back down. Kind of a BPR. It's also just a SIBI with an order block sitting above. So there's numerous things right here, and I'm, I'm going to try and label cursor them all for you. 50% of this wick is a wick CE, consequent encroachment of a wick. Order block is, bearish order block is right here from body to body. Okay, that's another thing. Arguably, this is a balanced price range, up and then back straight down. Okay, that's a BPR from, that's purple box. It's also a SIBI. Okay, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, fair value gap right there. It's all of those things. So it's a weak inefficiency, it's a buy side inefficiency, it's arguably a balanced price range. Michael doesn't talk a whole lot about balanced price ranges, but it's basically that. It's basically right there would be a balanced price range in my opinion. And it's also a bearish order block. So it's a lot of things. And you can see that price basically came up to the 50% of that wick inefficiency and then turned lower. I was pretty close to that, was not quite there. Um, again, and when you get really good with these concepts, you'll you'll get a feel for it. Um, these inefficiencies are commonplace. They're formed all the time. Wow, probably should have let that one run, huh? That's okay. I'm not mad. Um, so to review these trades, and I'm not going to review the earlier ones. They're too far apart from each other to explain, and they were pretty terrible. Um, to review, basically price turned at the consequent encroachment of this wick. I got short as I saw that price was, you know, I was looking at this BPR, bearish order block, SIBI. Um, so I was pretty confident that price was going to react here. When I saw that price reacted with these two black candles forming a little volume imbalance here, I was, you know, fairly confident that we were going to come back down. I was aiming for green box. So green box is uh, a volume imbalance, and I was aiming for green box. Didn't quite make it to green box. So I got short at 117.75. When I saw that price was made this balance price range right here, that's very dangerous. These three candle balance price ranges, those are, those are rocket fuel. I mean, those are really... You do not want to see those forming against you. So I covered at 103. Um, turn around, longed it as we came back into the 50% of this balance price range right here. So you can see purple box, the halfway point of that. Uh, tried to get long right there. As I saw price reacted on the 50% of that, longed at 108 three quarters. Covered two contracts at 26 spot 50, one contract at 110 spot 75. That was just above these local highs right here, internal range liquidity. And uh, with one contract at the very end, um, as price came back down to the same balance price range here, got long again at 102 spot 50, covered it at 128 spot 25. Yes, I did miss out on like 40 points, <laughs> 30 points. So, it, you know, it's, it reclaimed the same balance price range like four times, and then it popped off. Uh, and it popped off through a higher time frame, uh, SIBI, buy side inefficiency here. Just popped right through it. So it popped through this SIBI, 
pop through this SIBI, even up into this SIBI, and just ticked into this inverted wick inefficiency. So that is what it did. Um, all right, going to call it there. This has been live trading the NASDAQ New York PM session. Uh, use all my affiliate links. Subscribe, like, comment. Bye.